Now this illustration deals with applying OSHA 1910 subpart R. Now notice we're in the maintenance stage. All those overhead lines have been pulled and supported to the cross members of that utility pole. Now, when we get into, uh, we have a work, for example, of uh, OSHA 1910 uh, 269 subpart R, which is the maintenance standard as we're reviewing. And notice that that worker in that bucket truck, if he makes a closer approach than 10 foot or what is listed in the OSHA 1910.26, uh, 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 the table like uh, uh, the 1910 uh, uh, table S1, uh, S2, S3, those tables, notice that individual needs a face shield. The individual uh, might even need, uh, uh, say, sleeves and uh, rubber insulators and sleeves over that, uh, depending on the voltage, but they would need a, a face shield in most conditions. And there uh, is prohibited uh, to pass anything of metal to the person that's a climber to the person that's in the bucket truck. Now we know when we review the new 1910.269 uh, subpart R that a bucket truck is always used uh, if possible. We only have climbers now where a bucket truck just d does not have the access. So the key standard here uh, would be the National Electrical Safety Code, and it would be Chapter 2 for overhead lines, but Chapter 4 for maintenance-related safety work practices. So uh, it's a whole new ball game, and our work would uh, illustrate completely uh, the OSHA 1910.269 if a designer, installer, inspector, uh, maintainer was interested in such a standard, uh, such a standard, so that they would feel they're more qualified with knowledge uh, about uh, these uh, overhead lines, where they're su supported by a utility pole with cross arms or towers. So, uh, Figure One seventeen just illustrates applying OSHA nineteen ten. Uh, subpart R, after the lines have been constructed, installed, accepted, and approved under OSHA uh, 1926 subpart V.